So Netlify sent a user a bill of $100,000 for a simple static website. Let's take a look at what this is, what went wrong and how you, if you are using a provider like Vercel or Netlify or something like that, you can prevent this behavior or you can prevent this cost. So $100,000 is of course not a small amount. Of course, if you're hosting something, you know, you're expecting if it is static, you're expecting it to be pretty much zero cost. At most, at, you know, you are probably on a pro plan on Vercel or even Netlify, which costs like $20 a month but all of these plans even the pro plan comes with an uninterrupted tier right so what happens is that if you are using the things within that tier it will just be included in your plan but if you overshoot let's say for serverless compute or bandwidth or image optimization or anything like that then they will just charge you based on you know their rates so a similar incident incident happened at netlify where somebody received a hundred thousand dollar bill and uh, it's to say the very least it's a bit strange so let's take a look at what happened. So I received an email from Netlify last weekend saying that I have 104,000 almost in USD in bill overdue. At first, I thought this is a joke or some scam, but after checking my dashboard, it seems like I'm truly owning them that amount. So I was like, and think, okay, maybe I got DDoS. Since Netlify charges $55 for 100 GB for the exceeding bandwidth, the peak day of February 16th had this much amount, which is like, you know, 60 terabytes of bandwidth in a single day. See, so that's, that's the thing. That is the thing that two things wrong here. The first one is that, you know, this cost is outrageous. If you take a look at actual cost for bandwidth, it is not as expensive as $55 for 100 GB, right? Now, why Vercel and why Netlify and why, you know, all these SaaS providers sell the bandwidth extremely expensive? Vercel is cheaper than this. Vercel sells it for 40 USD, which I'm assuming like they are reducing now. I have heard some things that Vercel is in talks with a lot of people to reduce this number, but let's see what it is. But Netlify charges $55 dollars for a hundred gigabyte of bandwidth this cost is insane right so if you take a look at hertzner for example see so fit with hertzner 20 terabytes of traffic is already included and extra traffic is one euro per month per tv right so you can see that the markup here is 55 times more 55 times is you know it's orders of magnitude more than what a cloud provider like Hertzner is costing you and even AWS doesn't charge this month right AWS also has huge charges and but it doesn't charge that plus if you look at providers like Cloudflare Cloudflare has basically zero cost for this. So Cloudflare basically doesn't charge you anything at all if you are transferring data out of internet with their uh, CDN service or, you know, with R2, I think as well, which is their S3 alternative. So this number in itself is bad. But the second thing is that there is no automatic DDoS protection, which is, which I agree, like implementing a DDoS protection is by its very definition, extremely hard because DDoS means that it's distributed denial of service attack. That means that all across the world, the computers are pinging your IP address and your website address. And it's extremely hard to determine that this particular visit is a bot visit or is some malicious visit. And that particular visit is a legit visit. So what happens generally in cases of DDoS is that you anyway have to like, you know, put a cap on every single page of the website for every single user at least for that time being so if you go to cloudflare and these providers a lot of these providers actually what they do is they offer you a you know an emergency ddos mode so when you toggle that on everyone gets a challenge page on top of their you know whenever somebody's visiting your website they'll see a challenge page from that provider which itself absorbs all the ddos attack and then just lets legitimate users pass through because they have to solve a capture or something like that so see this is what happened like it was ddos on a single file which is you know a sound file and it got a lot of terabytes in data transfer and what they told what Netlify told is that told them that after looking into this further it seems like a lot of bandwidth usage came from some user agents that are quite ancient and uses Google Cloud addresses this would include devices such as this 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 so either you have a fan base with a passion for older technology or this was likely a DDoS attack. I mean, somebody who's getting 164 terabytes, I'm assuming that they don't have a fan base of that particular audio clip as aggressive as that. So, so this seems like a this seems like a weird message, weird email to write to someone who's already stressed about, you know, paying a hundred thousand dollar bill. But okay. Going forward, I would recommend hosting music on a third party music platform such as YouTube, Bandcamp or SoundCloud and reduce your bandwidth usage 
no matter how popular your site becomes so see this is where i really disagree with the with how netlify has responded in this email because if i'm hosting a website it is my website and i need those static assets whether that's an image whether that's a sound file whether that's a wasm binary i need that on the edge network which you are providing right that that was the whole proposition that we will deliver files very fast to you sure i can host my files on s3 but the only reason i would do that is to save money save costs not from a point of view that somebody just downloads my file 10 times and you know i'll be just bankrupt i will be homeless so i think this is slightly bad take from netlify where it's it's putting the blame on the user itself and especially in the case where ddos attack happened right so it's not like they are complaining out of thin air that you know something like that happened it's especially bad it puts a bad image that you can't trust netlify you know the next time you are probably hosting an image which is like 1 mb 2 mb you know you're not running any optimizer or let even go of that let's just assume you know you're hosting something like a monaco editor or a vs code sort of instance which we also do on code dam so if i show you for example this instance over here which let's say if you boot up this playground so you're going to see that a vs code like editor opens up now this syntax highlighting which you see this syntax highlighting can you see that these keywords are of different colors just like how it works in vs code you know how that is possible that is possible through a wasm binary called onigasm so o n i g a s m if you google this this onigasm binary it's a web assembly port of something that is required for this tokenization and colorful syntax which you see so basically this wasm binary or this package is required for vs code to provide syntax highlighting and for reasons which i don't want to get into this video but you need to host this binary under your own main domain right so you have to have that as a static asset on your domain it's also bundled internally by a node you know it's bundled by the build pipeline itself right so how let's say if something like this happens to code dam or something like this happens to a website which is using a solution like this then how would you would you really say that you know you can just pick your binary and just host it somewhere else i mean that's not the solution right we have to develop better solutions than just blaming it on the user so we normally discount these kinds of attacks to about 20% of the cost which would make your new build $20000 I've currently reduced it to about 5% which is $5000. I know this is still a lot of money and I apologize for the inconvenience. I mean, this is somebody who's imagine it from a scenario like you are not sitting in US, you're sitting in a country like India where 5000 USD is probably months of your salary or months of your savings, right? For an average developer or for an average person who's by the way like earning relatively well in India also. This this sort of behavior is something which is, you know, which which can be heart crushing it can be very brutal for somebody who is trying to just host a website a static website and they're just experimenting seeing things so yeah it's it's actually bad so he also posted it this on hacker news and netlify ceo responds our support team has reached out to the user from thread to let them know that they are not getting charged for this so of course like 100% of the charges charges are removed it is currently our policy to not shut down free sites during traffic spike that doesn't match attack patterns but instead for giving any bills from legit made mistakes after the fact apologies that this didn't come through in the initial support reply so see here people have also did done some pretty wild acquisitions on netlify that how on earth can i as a consumer be sure that netlify has not paid somebody to ddos me i mean this is completely fair question i would say but these are some of the questions where you can't do anything about it right so you can't do anything at all right because these are the platforms they are controlled by these platform companies right so at the end of the day their databases are black boxes their databases and what they report to you fundamentally are black boxes what we can just assume is that everyone has the best interest for customers in their minds and nobody's like messing around or you know just tweaking numbers or you know doing things like these to charge or overcharge customers that's the best we can think about just to answer this question there is no way you in in the world can tell that if netly if i did that or did not do that because it's their own systems at the end of the day you can't tell it from outside like watching it watching this video like this there is nothing i can do to tell like what happened so yeah that's basically it about this one i think it ended well with the person at least not paying anything i don't see like there is any sort of resolution so far on this that what exactly happened like 
who ddosed so that's it for this video i think it's at least the end was well for at least the person who got ddosed i don't think there is still any update on like they say they haven't the support hasn't come back with the ip information so that's still work in progress yeah what do you think about this let me know in the comments below make sure you like and subscribe thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video really soon